Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Thursday, September 14th, and we, meaning me, Jill Schlesinger, and he, Mark Talercio, we are here to try to help you make better financial decisions. Mark and I are both certified financial planners. Mark, I just realized it has been so long since I actually passed my CFP test that at some point I'm just going to, I will give it up at some point, I guess. You think so? I, I mean, why do I have to do all this stupid? I mean, as soon as I'm done with work, work, real work, you know, then I'm done. Yeah. It's like being a lawyer. You're really going to pay like you're always a lawyer, but you're going to pay your dues to the bar association if you're not practicing. I don't know. It's a little bit of a land grab with those fees. Also, have you noticed those fees going up? <laughs> They're only going one direction. I, mean, I was I, I have to do some continuing ed, which I'm sure I'll leave to the last week of, <laughs> of the uh, of the year. But I was like, oh, this is actually pretty expensive now. Like the the actual not the coursework, because that is worth it. But your actual just like your annual fees. It's expensive, man. I was surprised. Anyway, uh, if you want to know about a certified financial planner, you can go to their website. Their public facing website is letsmakeaplan.org. But if you want to become a financial planner, you should go to cfp.net. And uh, we are always happy to plug them because I love the designation. It's just like, gosh, it's expensive all of a sudden. Anyway, uh, what does this mean, a certified financial planner? It means that you have a certain level of training that is around how you approach somebody and their financial life. And in the case of a CFP, I think the, the most important piece of the, of the puzzle is not so much the, the actual inputs and the variables. It's really trying to say, like, who are these people? What are you trying to accomplish? And what's the best way to get people where they want to go? It's a more holistic approach rather than a product approach or uh, an investment approach. It's like, no, the most important part is you, who you are. And so Mark and I kind of adopted that for this program. Like you are the focus of the program. What your needs are, are the, the most important thing for us. So if you've got certain financial questions and you're wondering how to go about answering those questions, go to our website jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. And when you do that, a form will pop up and it will ask you to tell us a little bit about your situation. Now, if you're shy, put in a lot of information in that section. If you're not so shy and you think you'd like to join us on the air, then what you should do is click the box and then we'll bring you on the air. And that will help us kind of get a little bit of a, a sense of what you're asking before we get you on the air. But again, if you're really shy, don't worry, we do emails. And uh, don't forget, while you're on the website, you can sign up for the free weekly newsletter. You can also buy my book and you can subscribe to the Jill on Money live service, quarterly live webinars, and lots more bonus content. Okay, Mark, let's get to um, our listener today. It's Sarah, who's on the line from Bo Oh, all of a sudden, I heard a phone ring. Bring, bring. Hello, Sarah. Is that you with your phone ringing? I'm at work making money. So there's, you know, there's going to be interruptions. No, I've turned what it off. What are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> Sarah from Boston, how can we help you today? I have an opportunity through my employer to contribute to a non-qualified deferred compensation plan because our company was purchased by a for-profit company, whereas before mm -hmm. we were a non-profit. So for high earners, we have this opportunity to contribute to this plan, but that money is at risk, but there are certain benefits. So it's a risk versus reward to get to an early retirement um, using this type of account. And I wanted your mm -hmm. advice on several things. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back in time. Sarah, how old are you? 46. Tell us more about yourself. So I have a long-term partner. He is employed and doing well. We keep our finances pretty separate, but we own a home together. We are pretty much partnered in every way. I've been in school most of my life as a doctor. We spend a lot of time in school. We spend a lot of time paying back <laughs> all of those loans, which I've done now. Um, wow. Congratulations. Wait, can I just have a pause at that moment? <sighs> congratulations. You paid back all of your loans. That's amazing. So congratulations. Congratulations. I know. It's great. So no debt from the student loan standpoint. And you, one other thing I just want to make sure that we're uh, clear about you have a long-term partner. You own a home together. You say, we keep our finances separate. So am I to in, in, intuit from that, 
like if you were to die right now, would you do you guys have estate planning that you've done or is it yes. really so separate? Oh, okay. no, we've done all of our estate planning. He gets, you know, my finances. I get his. It's pretty. But as far as monthly bills, we split everything down the middle. And I really appreciate that, even though now I make more than him when we met. I didn't. So and I appreciate that balance. I OK, don't want to ever be so reliant on one other person. You know, I want to be able to support myself. OK, so how much do you earn now that all that stuff is paid off and you're like into your career? How much do you earn? So I make 270 base mm -hmm. um, and then there's bonuses every year based on production. I'm at the highest end of production and those are about 150 to 200 additional per year. Holy crap. Does that come in as one um, as one chunk or in, in quarters? In two. In two. OK. Do you feel confident that it's at least 150? I do, but you never know. Okay. <laughs> Everything okay. changes right. uh, sometimes with billing. Okay. Now, okay. So, um, so that's the the income. Let's talk about the um, what you have accumulated so far, Doctor Sarah. So I have um, a several accounts: a 401k with about 403,000, a 403b is 46,000, a Roth with 54, and that's from backdoor Roths from years ago. Um, the 457 plan, which is now that non-qualified deferred comp plan, is 190. Mm -hmm. An HSA with 30, a taxable account with 385, and about 44 in cash. Wow. I mean, I don't know how much um, debt you were carrying, but you have accumulated a sizable amount of money considering you were carrying debt. What? Just uh, for giggles, how much debt did you actually have to accumulate to be able to make all this money and also make all the and save all this money? Yeah. So medical school is expensive. Um, so I probably yeah. paid off over $400,000 in loans. <gasps> and that includes some undergrad in there too. But my undergrad was not anywhere near what medical school was. Medical school when I went was about 50 a year. Now medical students pay about 75000 a year to go. So all of that gets passed on to <laughs> consumers and patients, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That, But you did an amazing job. And here you are. And and this is um, do you like what you do? I mean, it is such a weird thing to go through all of this that, that I have to ask, like, are you happy? I do love my job. I love science. I love everything about what I do. What I don't like is the the other stuff, the litigation, the constant um, the ways we have to cover ourselves, um, even though mm -hmm. all we want to do is help. I, I think I can speak for pretty much all doctors. All we want to do is help. Um, mm -hmm. And there's just things in our way that are frustrating. So right now, the 457 plan is, is it frozen or has it already been converted? It's been converted. Okay. So it's no longer a 457. It is now 100,000 and 90,000 in a non-qualified deferred compensation plan, right? Yes. And so what are you contributing right now? So when I signed up for this, I didn't understand that my bonus is not considered, quote unquote, a bonus in terms of this plan. So I put 30% of my, all of my income into that this year, you know, when I signed up for it last year. So about it's going to be about 140000 this year, just mm -hmm. in that one plan. So what is the question that you're worried about yeah. with this? So I'm worried about the company going bankrupt because if this... Are we, or should we be worried? Is it that kind of a company? <laughs> well, you know, this company I'm with has traded hands a few times. Um, mm. So... And they're a very stable, you know, publicly traded company that has been very stable for very long. But okay. so my, my question to you is, how worried should I be about that? OK, so let's just let's do this right now. So let's think about this for a second and think about it. One way to defray the risk would be to say, hey, I already have four hundred fifty uh, five, six. So you almost have six. Let's just call it. You already have six hundred fifty thousand dollars in retirement assets that have not yet been taxed. Right. Which is your 401k, your 403b and the converted 457, which is now the non-qualified deferred comp. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. All right. And you only have fifty four thousand as a Roth. Right. Yes. Now, maybe in the back of your head, you're like, Jill, I am in the thirty five percent tops bracket, which is a high bracket. Right. Because if you make if you know, if you have a bad bonus year. You're like, oh, well, maybe I'm only mostly being taxed at the 32 percent, but we don't want to wish the bad year on you. We want to wish the good year on you, which would be 470,000, which means, you know, a lot of your money is taxed at the 35 percent bracket. Now, in some people's minds, that 35 percent bracket would be enough to say, 
oh, it's worth the risk of this company's, you know, deferred comp, you need the tax deduction. Even if everything is fine and dandy for a few years, the other risk we have is that you're building up so, you know, you're going to work for another 20 years, it sounds like. I mean, unless you're, I guess, a surgeon and maybe then you would only work 15 years, I don't know, 18 years. But let's say that you're going to be working for at least 20 years. We don't know where tax rates are going. So is it possible that we could say, hey, you know what? So pay the tax, bite the bullet. It hurts. It hurts like hell. I know it. Pay the tax that's due. Build up that taxable brokerage account. And you'll do this very quickly because you're putting so much money away that you will just have more flexibility. And you can determine like, oh, you know what? You know, one year, uh, if you decide that you you want to go back into the plan and things are very calm and cool and collected and there's no big change in the company or the tax laws change and all of a sudden we're not paying tax at the 35% bracket, but you're at the, you know, maybe all of a sudden you're at 37 or maybe tax brackets change and maybe you're at the 40 or 45%. All that can be different in the future, but at the 35% bracket, I don't think you should be afraid of paying the tax due and adding that to your brokerage account. I really don't. Tell me a little bit about the house also. How much is that worth? It's probably worth about nine fifty. dollars Oh, my goodness. And outstanding mortgage? four twenty. dollars And it's a low mortgage rate? two point eight seven five. That's about as low as you can go. Um, and you guys are happy there, right? Yes. Okay. And are there any other big expenses coming up that we should know about? No. Do you still do the backdoor Roth? No, I stopped doing it because I every year I got that, what was it, Form 8606, I got like, quote unquote, audited or whatever every year, even though I did it correctly. I do my own taxes. So, um, you know, and I'm able to correct it uh, and send them what they want, which is exactly what I already submitted. So I stopped doing the backdoor just because that got to be a hassle. Mm-hmm. But I can start doing that again. I mean, I'd like you to do it. If it's, if it's more of a pain in the neck than it's worth, then don't worry about it. One idea might be if this new company that has taken over starts to like, add other things, maybe you'll be able to do a Roth 401k through them. I do have an option for a Roth 401k. Oh, let's do that. But, but is that, I think I can't contribute all the way to my, you know, 401k. Why not? I can do half and half, but I can't put 22 in both of them. Just use the Roth. Just use the Roth. Just use the Roth for the whole 22.5. Isn't that easier? That's easier. I mean, I know you say I'm going to work for 20 more years, but I don't think I'm going to work for 20 more years. I'm kind of planning on an early retirement. But I think this, you've made me feel better about this. I was worried about it. And I I think you're right. It's just, it's too much of a risk. And I think I can do this the, the safe way. I mean, I think you're in great, great shape, truly. I, I really do. And um, after we get off the air, we'll find out what kind of doctor you are and see if we can use you to our advantage. <laughs> okay. um, do you have any other questions for us at this point? No, I think that's it. Fantastic. Well, if you are looking, I mean, this is a great question because it does beg the 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 real issue around like what is the financial wherewithal of an acquiring organization and what things you should be worried about. You know, these are like very uh, important questions when you work in nonprofit that get absorbed by a for-profit company. This are, these are questions about pensions when they are self-funded pensions versus um, ERISA pensions. So these are really, uh, they sound like annoyingly precise Um, issues that we're worried about, but they're important and they can have real lasting impact on your life. So if you're in any of these situations, we encourage you to reach out to us. And of course, if you are in any financial pickle or you've got a question that is bugging you, give us a holler. Just go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, and we would be delighted to help you out. Okay. Uh, Number one importance is that when you do go onto that website, try to bookmark it. We do update our, our content. Mark, I have a bunch of stuff to send you. I forgot to tell you about three articles for Tribune. I haven't put them on the website yet, so I'm going to send those to you. Isn't that annoying? But I'm sorry, you got to do it. That Mark that I'm talking to, he's the co-host, executive producer, and the web king of Jill on Money World and Money Watch World. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Lift someone up, change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. 